Yeah, yeah, you guys, the guys are off the hook. You're live with uh, Toby. Thanks for coming, Mike. Yeah, you guys. Uh, so, so sick. This is Toby's shop, uh, uh, Bodywork King. And uh, what's, what do we got going on over here? Man, uh, everyone's here to see you. Everyone's frothing. And uh, man, it's good to see, see the stoke alive. Everyone's pretty, pretty pumped. So it's great to have everyone here. Definitely the most packed I've ever had in the shop by far. So yeah, you, you bring a good crowd, man. Sick. Yeah, Thoughts? Kids. Yeah, it's good, man. Bodyboarding's still alive. Yeah. Definitely. We got a pretty good turnout here. Toby's got an amazing shop here in, uh, what's the name of this, of this town, Toby? Where are you looking? Brookville. 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 How do you find it? You can find it online. That's probably the easiest place. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Find us online. Check, yeah. check out our website, bodyboardking.com. Yeah, they got an amazing selection. I think he might be the biggest online seller in the world, actually. But he's got crazy, uh, crazy uh, variety of product, and he's got all the latest goods. And this guy knows what he's doing. He's a ripper. And really cool to see uh, bodyboarding in Australia like this. And um, this gentleman over here, Ricky. Uh, Ricky. I want to see Ricky's, Ricky's tattoo. It's pretty nuts. There's <laughs> representation there. Epic. Yeah, super stoked, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, you're a boxer as well. Yes. Yeah. I'm a chapel. Yeah. Cool. You got a fight coming up? Ah, uh, yeah, on the fourth of August. You better be there. Okay. I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be there. I don't want to get beat up. KO, mate. <laughs> I don't want to get beat up. I'm gonna go show up. Ah, um, you're just watching, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna give this to Ricardo, and uh, we'll do a little question and answer if you guys want to do a question and answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ricardo, yeah. Yeah, if you guys got questions for Mark or whatever, I'm sure we have an answer. So yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we can fix this, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky, is that really uh, This one? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can fix it. You can fix this. Yeah. You get a contact cement from the hardware store. Yeah. It's the same stuff they use for uh, carpet, and then you can just you apply it to both sides, let it get patchy dry. Yeah. You set it up first so you have a weight ready to push it flat, and then after about 20 minutes you get it packed in and put pressure on it. It should, it should stick on there. Yeah. Cool. That's what uh, that's what they used to make the work with. Okay. Wait. I'm taking it for a ride once and it goes really good like yeah. it's in the barrel but yeah. everything else I can't do anything else on it, eh? Oh, right. <laughs> it gets heaps of speed. You should talk to, uh, where's Johnny? Is he in here? He's over there. Johnny, this guy man, you gotta hook him up with a board or something. City <laughs> 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 start. <laughs> Promotion show, show Johnny. I don't think we had a question over here for you, Mike. What's going on, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I need help to do it, I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it would be great. I mean, there's so many great stories that I've had, and you know, all of us we've had over here, so it'd be amazing to have, like, a, 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 you know, a forum to tell those stories. we got to make sure I remember it. It's crazy. I haven't done it myself. I think I need like a ghost rider or a shadow rider over there. Yeah. 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 I guess um, back in the day when you were on the Bud tour and stuff like that, you had some crazy times on there. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Apart from the ways. Yeah. 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 We're pretty average there. Yeah, the ways are. I've seen you serving. I've been able to serve this big. Yeah, yeah, trying to get some. Yeah, so that's always been really hard for me, serving those small ways. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because the guys are, some of the guys are smaller on tour. Oh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. still fun. See, yeah. you're still winning back then. So. <laughs> <laughs> guys, have any questions on this side, or you guys want to? Yeah, Talk who, about who, anything in particular? Who was your fiercest uh, competitor through like your contest history? Well, of all the guys I ever competed with, the gnarliest guy is probably Toby. 
No, actually, Toby is a super high level rider. Um, so I'm stoked you got the shop and you, you know, doing uh, it. It's so cool to see. It's thanks, really, man. Really awesome. Um, there's been a number of different riders that, that uh, I've, you know, I've, I've had rival rivalries with throughout my career. You know, Ben. Uh, I guess at the beginning it was J.P. Patterson, then Ben Severson for a long time, and then Guillermo Tomega for a long time. Um, and now it's like every heat's a battle. <laughs> yeah. So there's no, you know, I guess Pierre is the guy to beat nowadays. Yeah, for sure. So he's he's doing really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just it's it's changed over the years. But you know, once in a while you'll meet up with a guy that's on the same path you are, and you just collide the whole way. Yeah, yeah. So it's but it's good, you know. If it wasn't for him and and those riders, like I, I wouldn't be half as good as I am today. You know, they push me and you know give me a lot of incentive to, to do to surf at a high level mm. so competition's good in that way i feel yeah so don't yeah. future moves plan body surfing after you oh body IRS? surfing yeah that's yeah so uh, that's pretty well <laughs> yeah, he's got the first body body surfing ERS i think on film which is pretty cool um yeah still there's a, there's, what's that still pulling yeah i haven't i haven't done one in a while though so you need a certain kind of way for that, like yeah. a powerful little nugget, and then you, have you can to come back. You can do it. What's that? You have to come back then. Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> do that or pipe. You could probably do it at pipe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Piper. Panics is a little harder. It's not doesn't have the same uh, pop, but um, you need a kind of a nuggety way to do that. But there's all kinds of stuff you could do theoretically body serving, because you don't have the limitations of the board. So you know you're in the water. You can you can rotate and move in weird ways. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and just do, I mean, you can't yeah. go as fast as you are on a bodyboard and get that speed and height, but you can sure. Yeah, there's, once there's you're not up. a lot yeah. of uh, hindrance once you're on the wave. Yeah. So you can, you know, yeah, so flips, rolls to flips, all kinds of stuff you can do. He's gonna do that. Looking yeah. forward Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how's the, how's the uh, Secret Sumatra oh, going? This, this year was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah best, so, best, uh, like best, Early season, away. He's half the, the season man, I've had. Is, introduce yourself. This is the man who uh, who runs Secret Sumatra. So if you guys want to know anything about Indo, this is your guy. Hey guys, yeah, yeah, pumping waves. About your, fifteen, uh, fifteen waves. Yeah, SecretSumatra.com. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, plenty of waves. It's a consistent area. Um, yeah, came home with a full belly this year. Having a having a new baby next week, so Congrats. be taking yeah. her back over there in, a, in about yeah. three weeks. So he's excited. Also, yeah. yeah, he's also gotten some amazing shots. Over there, yeah. So even, 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 yeah, even of yours truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he got a great, a great, uh, some great clips. Yeah. There's a um, video on the background of Mike uh, body surfing with the IRS. Who's talking about? Oh, that's so, the one. There, there is. Actually, is this one you put together? Yeah, this is my edit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this is his, his. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a story in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just go online and check it out. Cool. Um, yeah. Any any questions? Any? Yep. Plans for the future. Plans for the future. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, uh, I think it's. Um, I'm gonna keep going. You know, I don't. I don't plan on um, on uh, slowing down. Um, you know, you hit, you hit obstacles as you go through life, so you just have to be smart about them and, and you know deal with them and keep going. So, um, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I want to keep competing for sure. Physically, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. My shoulders kind of pretty much back to normal. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I really wanted to go down to Chile, but, uh, you know, it was kind of a tear to either come here or go there, and um, based on what's happening, I thought it would be a really good idea to come here. I've been here for a few years. Um, but, yeah, I definitely plan on continuing to compete and, um, yeah, just keep doing what I'm doing, you know. I love the sport. I love, I love my lifestyle, and it's pretty awesome. So I'm just like, yeah, no reason to change at this point. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is there one wave that you go to bed at night and that's the wave you remember for your whole life? The best wave you ever Oh, that, yeah. Um, gosh. <laughs> Man. Um, you know, there's there's been certain uh, waves or certain um, occasions that you, your expectations, and I have super high expectations, meet your, uh, meet reality to some degree. And, and those are like kind of really uh, fulfilling moments. Um, I can't say that there's one wave in particular. But uh, man, there's so many sessions that I've had over over time, and you guys have probably had them too. I mean, as as wave riders, you guys, we have access to like some of the best experiences that exist on this planet. So we're real fortunate to have that, and I've been super blessed to be able to do it for as long as I have and, and experience the things I have. So I wouldn't say one wave in particular, but 
so many different sessions and so many different ways and so many like places that have just been so amazing. I mean, the, the world's such an amazing place. Yeah, just get out there and enjoy it, you know, as, as much as you can. That's my, my, um, my, my Is guess there my a favorite tutorial. way, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, so many good ways here. I really like Shark Island. That's one of my favorite ways here. Um, it's, I just like the fact that you just like, you know, you see this wave coming in and just like, just all in, you know. You gotta pretty much go all in and charge it. Have you know, it yet? I haven't body surfed it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe body surfed it at my last Maybe when it's full full. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty impressive because it's kind of fast. Maybe uh, maybe a surge at the right tide would be, would be good. It's a kind of wave, though, that for body surfing, it could be good, I guess, because it's got a lot of power. Yeah. The wedge, yeah. When it's full full, the wedge. Yeah. 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 And, and we've got an online question from um, Antonio. Uh, how do you compare the current boards with the ones from back in the day when you started? What's the biggest improvement? Gosh, well, you know, from someone just from the outside looking in, if you don't really know what you're looking at, you might just say, oh, they look very similar. But there's the ones these days are so much more refined. They're so they're so much more precise. Um, the manufacturing is so much better. The quality is so much better. The performance is so much better. So, you know, um, all in all, they're just. Uh, they're way better these days. Um, Quality is better, and I mean, every aspect of it seems to be better. You know, it's more dialed in. Guys are pushing it more. The, the level has increased, and as a result, you know, they demand better equipment, and so it's this huge cycle of, of progression, which has been really cool. Um, yeah. Right. And uh, what's the what's the new improvements for the science range coming in this year? In yeah. So yeah, we got a couple cool things going on. I mean. I was going to have John feel this board. This is like the, the original seven. Like 80, 20 rails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But just feel the, feel the flex of that core. Like that is really interesting. This is the old PE. It's thicker, and so it's got a different feel without a stringer. Um, so we're making a board that kind of mimics that. Uh, this board over here, what is that? The style. The style MS classic. Uh, classic. So on the um, yeah, so that's this thing. You know, we're, so this is a, an attempt to uh, have similar feel to this, yeah. and uh, it does. It, it, you know, I got on it the other day, and I was able to do moves that I haven't done in like 15 years. You know, because it's like really buoyant and um, stays high on the water, and just it rides really loose, and it's fun. It's just a lot of fun to ride. Is it heavy, like the old Yeah, alcohol, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Feel it. You can heavy. check it out. I mean, it's a little yeah. stiffer, but once you get in the water and you start working with it, it, it works real similar. I mean, it, this is a super refined version of that, but it, we're looking for the same effect. Yeah, it's just so that's PE. Yeah, and obviously that's been used already. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's one, one board that we're doing. It's a classic retake. And then um, I guess just, just uh, yeah, we're continually refining. And uh, I think what we're going to do, like we kind of decided that we're going to start like uh, showing what we've been doing for like the last 20 years about as far as development because uh, we've gone through so many things that we think are kind of cool ideas and then we'll make them and we'll prototype them and they don't work quite right and it's it's tempting to kind of just go to market and just go oh, okay that looks cool we could you know probably sell some boards but if it doesn't work good we're not going to do it so um, I guess you know the main thing for us is just like focusing on what works functionally and just refining it and keep improving like I'm always trying to improve and actually start showing people why they work so good yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it. John, this is John Crickshan. He kind of runs this show over here in Oz. Um, he's also an expert bodyboarder, and uh, uh, I love I love working with him because we can talk the same language, and uh, it's just real good synergy we got going. So that's been pretty cool. Yeah. What's the um, Venturi channels? Is that? Yeah, so uh, the, the new Vent channels that, that uh, it's on here. That are got going. Nice. So the, nice. the idea, this is our actually our, um, uh, kind of a newer generation, um, and it's just slightly more soft, uh, but basically the idea is kind of maintaining a consistent surface area from entry to exit, and uh, by that it doesn't, it, it really minimizes any drag going into the channel. Um, a lot of times there might be a steep um, curve, or it has to go over a bump, and what I try to do is make it as smooth and as easy for the water to flow into that zone and then load up the pressures you know, against the, the back corner. So that's what you're really looking for in a channel is to kind of load up the pressure on the back rail. And um, I think these do it really good. And, they're, and they're, because they're pretty mellow, like they're not, they don't have super deep uh, ridges and, and uh, 
um, lines, the water doesn't uh, fight it and it just kind of flows into it. So more flowy, I guess, and but still with a lot of um, uh, positive effects that the channels have and super fast. Like you, it's almost like you don't have channels, but you still get that, that holding effect. So um, that's that's the idea behind the, the vent channels. Yeah. Nice. I think we have a question on I me. Mean. Slightly off board, but um, how do you deal with your anxiety or nerves when you're in ways that are outside your comfort zone? You know, is it fitness you, that you use to rely back on, or is it, you know, extra? Yeah, I, I still freak out. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line, if it's if it's heavy, I still it's a challenge for me to to, to keep uh, my my um, to keep calm. Um, but uh, you know, if, if you spend more time in it, you, you are naturally become less, less um, like uh, uh, nervous about it. Yeah. So you know, in the past, like a big day at pipe, I could pretty much um, I'd be nervous, like super nervous before I paddle out. And now, because I've done it for so many years, I'm not as nervous. I still I still get like still have a feeling, but I try to like you know push out the, any sort of negative uh, aspect of it because if you start thinking of the consequences you're gonna yeah you're, yeah, you're done yeah um so just stay focused on on uh, the wave and really be at a high alert yeah. and try to try to use that uh energy that's um really that nerves or, you know that's a natural uh response to a, an increased challenge yeah, so that's something that yeah that's something that is ingrained in you you know from back to the saber tooth tiger days and so when you have that heightened sense, it's actually giving you kind of super abilities. So if you can use those uh, in a positive way and just stay super alert and always moving, always being attentive to what's going on and just focused, you can you know handle big, really big surf. Usually, like if I go out into really big waves, I won't eat it. I'm so calculated and so cautious. Um, I don't want to get smoked. I don't want to yeah. lose my board. You know, my allowed to see. So all these things, like this, is, you know, it could be a total nightmare. I might lose your board. You know, you get in bad situations. So, really be uh, uh, focused in, in bigger surf. So I guess to get over it, you just have to really be mentally disciplined, yeah. and and try to um, try to uh, uh, progressively work your way up to those conditions and build confidence as you know along your journey there. Do you do a lot of fitness training and things as well? I do. Um, I do. I've been lack, uh, slacking recently because I've been on a pretty heavy tour but um, yeah definitely like every day I'll stretch I'll try to stretch every day I missed it this morning because I brushed, was rushing down here but I'll try to stretch every day I'll do um, when I'm at home I do like a kind of a core workout every other day um, unless I'm surfing a lot I mean I work out to surf I don't surf to work out yeah. so that's always secondary my first priority is wave riding yeah. so um, I focused on you know just certain types of core core things that I do that kind of keep keep me fit and then um yeah, just surf and eat good. Yeah. You know, that's really important. Your diet and lifestyle. Try not to stress out too much. Yeah. Drink good water, stuff like that. Rest, plant, you need a lot of rest. Appreciate yeah. it, Mikey. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Um, you've been bodyboarding and just riding waves at a, like, at a high level for a long time. What do you do in fear of like burning out? Or like, how do you manage that? Or, like, have you yeah. ever experienced like, just going through like a patch where you just feel like you're going to burn out. Yeah, so, you know, life is all about balance. So you don't want to be, you know, it's, a, it's this thing of effort and work and pleasure and stoke. Um, so you got to find your own balance, you know, what your tolerance is for that. And if you feel burnt out, take a break. You know, people don't realize what, how flexible people, people are physically and mentally. Like you can, you can take break, big breaks if you need to, you know. Um, you know, I've been in situations where I haven't been able to be, be in the water for like months, you know, uh, and coming back right when the day you come back, compete at a high level. So as long as you keep your mind active, and uh, it's okay to take a break sometimes. And, um, but yeah, plateaus are just, that's just how you learn and how, how things progress. You know, you're always going to, you're always going to hit these stepping stones, you know, and then it's up to you if you use them as stepping stones or you just get, you know, oh, I, hit a barrier, shots, okay, I'm over it, you know, take it back, look at it from a different angle, step on it and go to the next, next thing, you know, so usually it, uh, if you just, some self-analysis, or just analysis of the situation, will yield a really good perspective of it, so if you look at why you're feeling burnt out, you know, and you start analyzing it, I always say like the most, the, the strongest thing you got is your mind, 
and uh, too often we get caught up in the day-to-day um, you know rigors of, of social media or whatever it is you know we're not even thinking outside of what's right in front of us so sometimes you know take a break you know maybe in the morning if you stretch out that's a good time to kind of contemplate things and think through things and plan things and if there's ailments or you know you're hitting a distraction or there's some negativity in your like a negative blockage somewhere in your life then just try to analyze what it's from you know and then and then work around it you know just be creative and come up with another solution around it so we're, we all have that capacity and it's just a matter of like okay that's all we got to do so you just got to kind of think it through sometimes yeah so long long answer to a short question very wise answer very wise answer hey mike um you were saying about social media being a distraction and that, like a bunch of young kids in here. Um, how do we get these guys into the sport? How do we, you know, really give them an avenue into our sport? All, all the young kids and everything, you know? What? Well, just I think it's like, yeah, I mean, it's all of our responsibility to pass on our knowledge to our kids and the kids around us. And uh, for these guys, like, you know, I think it's just sharing the stoke, you know? What, what, what was the hook for us? Like, why did we... Why was it, you know, why is this such a great thing for us, you know, because it's just a lot of fun. So that needs, that part of it should be shared with your, your, your kids, especially when they're young, because they don't need the, the, the negative parts of it, you know, they don't need the drag. They, they, what they need is they need the positive parts of it so that they kind of latch on and go, wow, this is incredible, you know. Once they kind of get that hook and they're stoked on it, then as you know, it kind of it leads to an extremely rich lifestyle. And, uh, you know, so that's like the, the, that's like the extra reward, you know, so you get all these incredible memories, you know, like the things you guys have in your mind, like, I wish I had some of that, some of those waves, you know, because those are like special moments that happen in, in, on this earth. And you guys are unique enough, you know, what we're doing that it's like, those are, those are special moments, you know, and you guys have that in your memory and that no one can take that away. It's, it's in there. You guys did it. And so those visions and those thoughts, um, I think more than anything, if we can if we can encourage those guys to kind of be on a path to uh, be receptive to those and get those and get that stoke, you know, I think you're, you're going to get a lot more stoked people on the planet, you know. So I think that answer your question, John. I think it's just a matter of getting kids more more kids like hooked on the stoke of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've done a good job with Jackson. He's a pretty stoked bodyboarder, eh, Jackson? Most mm. most stoked uh, grommet I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, he's pretty much a frother. Yeah, Matt Rileyson over here too, yeah. Marlon. Riley, yeah. Yeah. Marlon over here. It's kind of so late today, I heard. Yeah, from yeah. from Matt Riley, who's in the house over here. Matt, what's up? Another epic wave rider from back in the day, and uh, he's still ripping. And this is his kid, Marlon. Marlon, what do you think about? What do you think it would take to get uh, uh, more kids your age into bodyboarding? I mean, what makes what makes you like it so much? Uh, just. Um, just feels natural to me. Yeah, great. I just like doing it. Good. And it's fun, right? Yeah. Pretty fun to do. Yeah. You get to see some really cool things. Get to, s- get to swim with sea creatures. Yeah. And be careful of other sea creatures. <laughs> 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 but you're, you know, you're in and, in and amongst it, man. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And how about yourself? Um, I reckon just, like, if you do it, just pass it on to your kids and just they keep on passing on and then they, yeah. Yeah, like it's fun to surf with yeah, your other fun. friends, right? Yeah. Super fun. You guys share those moments. And it's not it's just like a personal cool. thing, it's like a collective thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's super, super cool. Yeah. yeah. Next gen r- ripples right here. That's cool. What else, guys? Any questions? Anyone else? Do you, do, you, do you have any boards in like your personal collection and do you keep your old, your older boards, your old models? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I collect my boards. Size range. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, you know, I've been at it for a long time, and I've made a ton of prototypes, like, like thousands, and um, I don't know what to do with them. A lot of times, you know. Pass them on to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> open your boardroom. Yeah, he's cool got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, he went into my container and. I had a container of stuff, and he went in there and was like, oh, what are you doing? This stuff is like, my board's like, no, that's my pride and joy, you can't. I'm not, it's coming out of me. So he's got one in his shop, John. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I got a bunch. I got a bunch, yeah. And what do you think about the resurgence of, like, the whole vintage stuff? I think it's great. I think it's super cool. Um, It's great to see, you know, because think about this, like, there wasn't, 
you know, what's, what's the common thread is this yeah. for us, you know, to, to, it connects people and it connects us with the ocean. Yeah. That's super cool. Like, that's what Tom was trying to do initially, and that's what he's accomplished. And uh, the fact that we can all sit, stand in a room with a, with a common, uh, you know, love, it's like, that's pretty cool. So I think, I think the vintage page is amazing. I'm super stoked on it. Yeah. Just a follow-up sort of question. When you're traveling and going around, how many boards are you taking in your personal equipment for actually riding, not the, not the yeah, other ones? Yeah, it depends on the trip that I go yeah. on. Um, yeah. If I go on a quick trip, yeah. uh, like a board yeah. and a pair of fins yeah. with tethers. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if, if I don't, you know, if it's more like a, if it's for a contest, yes. Uh, if, it, if it's for one contest, I usually take three to four boards. If it's for a series of contests, it might vary in conditions. I might try to squeeze in five or be more selective with the four I take. So uh, I usually take my gyro case, I load that thing up, um, and then I'll carry an ultralight to, for like a daily daily thing. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, that's my that's kind of my, my thing. But what I did on this, because he kind of... I know it's like the, the tethers don't work that good if you don't actually you put them on your fins. Yeah, okay. yeah for some reason, you know. <laughs> I lost the fin, that's what he... Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah uh, <laughs> uh, where is I? I'm too anyway. totally thrown off. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so that's that's kind of what, how, it, how it goes. Oh, this trip, I was, I was going to say, like I was, like, was going to go to Chile, I was going to come here, and then just based on what was happening in Chile, because they didn't have a long waiting period, I'm like, okay, I don't think that's a smart move, so I'll come to, come to Australia, which I've been wanting to do for a while. Yeah. So I just loaded up, I, I had a little ultralight and everything I owned, so I had one board and a pair of fins, yeah. and, and a pair of tethers yeah. that I didn't use <laughs> one day, <laughs> and, and uh, that was it. I just loaded that thing up and came over here. So, yeah. But yeah, I would say, you know, to, to expand on that a little further, like there's definitely boards that work better in condi certain conditions. So you want, you know, you can bring those boards, like cold water boards, warm water boards, hollowways, not so hollowways. Funny, with, with the resurgence of the, and then getting these boards back out of the cupboards and riding them just to, to see how they feel different. Feel and the good, whole, huh? the, 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 uh, we're talking about four, just, they just sit on the top of the water. Yeah. They just yeah. float. They're the easiest things to paddle ever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Dogs oh, to it. duck dive, yeah. but they're. You gotta they, get this yeah. Classic, man. Yeah. yeah. So you've been, you've been riding three boards, though, this trip that I've seen you yep. ride. So your, your, your classic one yep. that you seem to always ride. Yep. The, you've had to go on the, the new style classic, which is yep. you know, a bit thicker, yep. and then also a style limited bat tail. Right. So <laughs> what's the difference between the three? Like, yeah, you, there's a big difference. Um, the, the classic, like I mentioned, does kind of have a more floaty feel. It stays on top of the water more. Yep. So you can, you, can, uh, you can do a lot of different things that you don't, don't normally do with the more blady boards. Uh, the more, like the boards now don't have a lot of volume, and the rails are pretty, pretty uh, uh, tight. And so uh, you don't get a lot of a uh, uh, lot of that floaty feel. Um, the bat tail is cool. New bat tail is a little softer, and um, uh, you can you can uh, uh, go rail to rail really easy on that. And that's actually a pretty fast board, the new limited. And then the, the board I normally ride, which is a loaded uh, style, I just like that board because it's really universal. So they all they all ride a little different. Um, but yeah, generally super stoked on the new ones. They're, they're just the little refinements, you know, the things that you might not see, but they work good, like the modifications to the channels, um, just small things like that, you know, new materials, different layups. The different layups make a big difference. So uh, it's all, you know, just this constant, like we're constantly trying to get it improved, and it's nice when you get on it and you feel those improvements, and you can kind of just keep, keep moving forward rather than just being stagnant. So that's really important for me. We've got another question here online from uh, Antonio Marcelo Oliveira. Mike, over the past couple of decades, we've seen a significant change in several manoeuvres, which have got, gotten increasingly more complex. Do you think there are still new manoeuvres to be discovered? Yeah, for sure. There's definitely, there's definitely um, um, new moves, more moves. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that, that I think can be done. I think you know what you're going to see in the future is kind of what basically what you've seen in the past, which is more gnarly w maneuvers and more gnarly waves. And then not just that, but like putting it all together, 
in a good way. So it's not just guys aren't just going like one high speed and just go for one move. It might be like they're linking some stuff together more. Um, but maybe it's like even land, a, landing and going on rail. Yeah, 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 kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe it's a situation where you might get one wave where a guy does that, and then another wave is doing something different too. You know. Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, I think it's just uh, more. It's going to be more um, diverse and more um, more gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> it always has, but I mean, guys, just look at Chile. Yeah. Look oh, at yeah. pipe oh, in yeah. Chile, and it was yeah. like <coughs> the level is just so crazy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Did you see some of the cliffs, Toby, from from Chile? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Oh, no. Really yeah. cool to see you guys just going all in. Oh, yeah. more, yeah. Yeah. That Inver was not. More, more sent me one yesterday, and I watched the highlights. Yeah, it's pretty nice, man. It's pretty sick. The guys are going big, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really big. Yeah, yeah, totally. Bigger than ever. Yeah, oh, man. That looks painful. Yeah. Are there a couple of spots you recommend traveling to, spending a month in um, that could really grow, grow yourself as a body boy? Oh, that you yeah. can push yourself. Say you just finished school or something. Yeah. Saving up for a year or whatever. Ready to do this. Um, two or three places that you spend a month in that you'd recommend. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's a number of spots that Hawaii, are really, the really good. Um, I like Tahiti. You know, yeah. if you can if you can link up with another uh, bodyboarder there, yeah. you know, maybe go and make friends on Facebook or something, because that's it's really it's really important to have a connection there. But that has a lot of waves, and you can really you can kind of hone your technique if you that's what you're looking at doing. But any anywhere where it's like, I would suggest a reef, probably, uh, just because it's consistent. And if you can find a reef that's consistent, that's pretty good. Um, just depends what you know what criteria you're looking for. If you're looking for a cheap trip are you looking for one that's just got good waves you know waves cheap so. yeah so probably i don't know i like i like south pacific zones okay cool. yeah yeah that's pretty for me that's one of the favorite my favorite yeah. places because it's warm and then you can yeah. you know really get some good waves Sweet. yeah <laughs> yeah shoes guys have you been to the mint towers um yeah you've been to the mint towers a few times yeah okay. yeah Enjoy yeah it's really fun um uh, there's some ways that are better suited for different types of like there's some that are good for bodyboarding some that are good for body surfing even yeah. some that are good for like uh, hardboard surfing so um, I'd say most of the waves up there are there's a few spots that are really good for bodyboarding yeah. but most of them are catered more towards more mellow like down the line um, but they're still really fun yeah. still, still like great waves for bodyboarding you know there's like green bush there's like uh, bank vaults there's a right with a big yeah. ramp on it um, yeah, that's just, a, just that's fun. It's good, good for big ramps. And then um, uh, Marconi's is good, but you know, it's, there's a lot of really fun ways. Of, uh, did like, you go on a boat or, or by me? No, I did. I did a boat. Uh, yeah. When I was going through there, there wasn't any camp set up quite yet. Oh, okay. So, um, or maybe like one uh, up up north. Okay. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, um, yeah, it was, it was a while ago. Yeah, but good waves, really good waves. Yeah. Yeah. Was so you you based in Hawaii still? Yeah, I live in Hawaii. Yeah. I was going to say, we're looking at some chopu here. And, uh, oh, yeah. What was it like to set that when you're around back in the day? Okay, this wave right here, uh, I was I asked Derek Cole, who's right next to me, if he wanted to go doubles. Yeah. Oh. And we would have got the shot of the century on this wave. No way. Yeah. But that's actually a pretty big wave. That's like about an 8 or 10 foot wave. No way. Yeah, it's big. And I, I came flying out and I almost whacked the boat. I couldn't turn very well. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, Would you say that's like the um, like heaviest wave on the planet, or the most challenging? Tiopo? Yeah. Um, I think at size it's pretty incredible. Um, it's the the drop is for sure very very hard, um, but once you get onto the wave onto the wave face, it's pretty easy. Like you pretty much just hold on and go. And you're either too deep and you're not going to make it and just get annihilated, or you'll you'll make it. You know how it is. I mean, you yeah, yeah. up there. So the hold down, stupid. There. Just... They're kind of long. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of long, but it, you don't have that much space. Like, there's not a lot of space between, like, where this wave is breaking and then dry reef is not that far from there. There's probably about maybe, I don't know what, like 50 meters 50 or something. Meters. Yeah, yeah. 50 well, meters, and then you wash up, and it's like, you might be able to see it, like, it's like right over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Anyway, I'm in a shirt in this in this one because I I had we decided to go on this trip like hours before the plane left. We saw the swell and we, we just said okay let's go. So I didn't have any 
This is just a shirt I wore on the plane. It's <laughs> 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 uh, pretty funny. But it was pretty good. That was a good swat of chase. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Any qu any other questions, you guys? Uh, no. Yeah, was it, one, sorry. There's one. There's an interview in um, one of the surf magazines <laughs> where you followed a swell back in the nineties. I think it could have been. Yeah. All the way into um, Atlanta or something. Uh, like yeah. So I went from um, I was actually in Tahiti, okay, and uh, I was on an outer island, and uh, I called up uh, I called up. Um, Sean Collins to kind of find out what the swell's doing and uh, to see if, you know, if I should stay or I forget why I called him, but I called him up to get a report. And um, so he said that there's a huge swell coming and, and uh, you know, I'm thinking huge for Tahiti is probably 10 feet, but he said it no, like huge, like why may I been like 20 feet, you know, plus. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So what we did is we, I started talking to him and I was I was gonna go to the other islands, just because I was trying to get out of there. But then right right when um, um right when I was on my way to do that, um, or actually during the phone call, he said, "Hey, you should try follow this thing." I think he encouraged me to go, and so um, I went to the other islands and uh, ended up surfing um, a couple different waves that were massive, and got got uh, Teopo right at the tail end of it. So it's kind of like south. Because the first day it was like so big, it would have been surfable, but I didn't know. Nobody really surfed it super huge. So um, I, di I did get it on the, as it was kind of dropping, but it was still like solid 12, 15 um, and, and good. And then the flight left like that night. So it was just kind of this weird coincidence that my scheduled flight, because it was, I think the flights were once a week, and my <coughs> scheduled flight and the swell kind of co coincided. So I jumped on a plane, went up to Hawaii, had a day break, and then, then it just started the, the rampage. I flew to Maui, which was, there's a way that rarely breaks, but it, on a big swell, it'll break this place called Ma'alaya. It's just really fast, right? And I surfed that. And then while I was there at the beach, I was talking to Sean, and he's like, man, you gotta keep going, you know, like. And uh, it's starting, the buoys are starting to hit in California already, because it was a big one. So that, that night, I flew out to California and went to the wedge, just got on, just went straight, red eye, straight to the wedge, jumped in the water, and it's pretty big, and uh, went out and surfed out, it was big, and then that night, we left for another place on a boat up the coast, and uh, that was super sick, and then we stayed there like one night, and then came in, as soon as I came in, we caught a, uh, I got a flight to Alaska, and then caught it up in, up into Alaska, so it was, it was pretty cool that time because uh, I was sponsored by Mattel, okay. and they had deep pockets, so it was like, hey, I got this idea, we're going to do this, this, and this, they're all like, yeah, go for it, I'm like, yeah, awesome, <laughs> so I just started booking it, you know, but it was really expensive, yeah, um, I don't, you know, it would it'd be hard to do it now, you need like some yeah. sort of sponsor or something to do it, yeah, yeah. Um, but you could do it, it's just, you need sneak funding, yeah. but yeah, it's amazing, amazing experience, you know, super tiring. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was I was exhausted, you know, after the first couple of days, and you keep doing it. You just like, you know, make you make mistakes and do stupid things, you know. Yeah. Like we got to this place up the up the coast from Incali, and and um, we were both so exhausted. This guy was traveling with and filming that he like filmed. But back then it was film, it wasn't video. Yeah. So we filmed it. We put it on the film, and then um. Uh, he used the same film and filmed over again. Oh. So there's like two way, you know, two things. <laughs> So it's, we kind of lost some footage and stuff. It's just, you know, you just yeah. make, make mistakes. Get like. Yeah, <laughs> totally. But yeah, great, great trip, great um, experience. Yeah. The and last thing, the, the last bit would have been pretty amazing to be surfing a place. Yeah. Like that. But yeah. Alaska is a, a really cool place to surf, actually. There's yeah. good waves and there's no one around. Wow. And it's just, it's majestic. You know, yeah. you see huge mountain ranges in the distance and it's just like, Super Were you worried cool. about sea life in there at all? I was a little bit yeah. tripping out and then I worried about bears too. Yeah. Like there's grizzly bears. Yeah. So, um, but I didn't see any, but they, they said, oh yeah, don't just, only thing you got to worry about is the bears. They, you know, might be eating berries in the, on the, and I'm thinking, Phew, what? <laughs> I show up, I got shorts, you know, from traveling. I got, you know, you show up and, and the way the, because of the latitude, it was like 10 o'clock at night around the beach, it's still light. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're, we're cruising and I'm just thinking, man, what if a bear comes down, we're going to get worked. <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it was cool. No incidents. It was all good. Oh, yeah. Have well, a great, great trip. Great story. And thanks for the question. That's a good. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.
Guys, any more, any more thoughts? Where's the yeah. next hot spot? Where, yeah. you got, where, where you want to go next? You can see any smell come up on the map where you're going. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm kind of like, I, I like the Namibia. It looks pretty interesting. Yeah, looks oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That looks pretty cool. Speaking of <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> no, that's, that would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, wherever it takes me, I want to go, you know. Like, I don't have any particular plans, per se. You know, there's things I'd like to go to, but I don't know if I ever will, but I'd like to. Yeah. You know, like, I like to surf that right. I'd like to, you know, down south. I think that's pretty, looks pretty intriguing. Yeah. Um, well, you're in Australia. Yeah, I know, right? And a four-hour yeah. flight to the other side of the country. Okay, well, hook it up. Where's the jet ski? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't start me. Dude, no. <laughs> it's done now, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, you know. Um, seems like the, you know, the sport and, God, just everything in general is taking so many turns now with, with the way the Internet is. And, uh, you know, just be agile and get ready to move in whatever direction it takes me. Yeah. As good wave riders, that's what we do anyway. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. on the map. Right? Yeah. Use what's, use what's around us. You're gonna you're gonna ask something? Uh, yeah. Is there somewhere you haven't been yet that you want to go? Oh yeah. So you guys were thinking the same thing. <coughs> yeah, probably. I would like to go to Namibia. Yeah. One of the guys just just. Oh, this guy here? Yeah. yeah. He just went. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you go? How was it? Yeah, it's amazing. I've been. I went over three times, but yeah. this last one was like good best, one. Best of. Best of yeah, best. sick. Yeah, it was amazing. I hear Pretty the sandbar isn't as good as it was. It's changing. It's weird because it's, the swells are so infrequent that yeah. like you only get to judge it once a year. Yeah, right. And oh, basically, it's definitely changed, but it kind of handles like a bit more south than the swell now, which is, in a way, it's good because the, it's more frequent that you get south, okay. uh, more south facing swells as opposed to west. Right. And um, this one was sick because it like came from real west and just bent south, so you got like the whole oh, spectrum. Oh, nice. And yeah, it got up, it got pretty big. Hey, it was like nice. a good six feet maybe, and it's oh, a, one yeah. of the heaviest waves I've ever ridden. It's super thick. Hey. It's so thick. It's actually real dangerous, I reckon, just because yeah, it's, yeah. it's like surfing Kiki for like two k's. Yeah. Is the sand is the sand hard packed? Yeah. Yeah. Real compact. So yeah. So it is. It is dangerous. And yeah. yeah. Someone got hurt in the swell just after that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the first time someone's actually been hurt there somehow. Yeah, but, you um, slammed at the bottom at high speed. Yeah, yeah. Up. But yeah, I've, I've yet to go to Tahiti. I've got that hopefully in the plans oh, yeah, for next year. Yeah, but, um, yeah, you'll be stoked over there. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's the uh, most mind-boggling yeah, wave I've seen for sure. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just that looks pretty cool. So that's, that's one spot. Um, uh, like, you know, I think there's uh, also other re areas that could be really cool, like um, China, Russia, up in that zone, and maybe, maybe into the Lucian Islands. Um, northern, northern, and then I mean, God, there's so many zones, you know. I mean, I've, I've only really surfed, sc scratched the surface of it. Like, there's so many that I haven't been to. So a lot more that I haven't been to probably than I have. Yeah. Yeah, Africa seems like it's. Africa's holy, man. There's a lot of waves over there. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Off the Emerald, Emerald, we're going to be at Emerald at 4th tonight, so check it out. Cool.